Throughout a lesson, we're going to ask a variety of questions, and we'll have a variety of reasons for asking those questions. So I've split them up into four categories to help us kind of think through what we're asking, why we're asking it, and what that can gain in a lesson. So the first type of question I'm going to call focus questions. These are really just to get students started or if they're stuck. These are necessary sometimes. Maybe the student didn't read the problem carefully, or maybe they just need to read it again. But these questions are kind of prompting them to get going. So you see some examples here, and these are all to just kind of get students started, or maybe if they get stuck later on, we can focus them in on a certain part so that they can kind of get that little boost to get going again. They include things like, what's the question asking? Or what tools might you use? Or how might you start this out? If there's a diagram or visual, we might direct their attention to that and get them to kind of just explain to us what they see. These are just meant to focus the students on what they're doing, the task at hand. All right, the next kind of question is called an insight question. This is to give the teacher some insight about what the students are thinking, what they know, what they understand. You can think of these as a formative assessment. I know a lot of times I was told you need to do formative assessments frequently, and I got where I was kind of wearing myself out with uh, exit tickets and little quizzes and things that I would then have to go grade and then try to work into my next lesson. And in the end, it was kind of wearing me out. And it also wasn't that helpful because by the time I got the information, the students were gone. So I think the best way to get a formative assessment of what students know is doing something that lets us know immediately what they're thinking. And questions do that. So think of these as informing you. This is letting the teacher know, do the students understand what they're doing? What are they thinking? What kind of procedure are they using? Where did they come up with that? So you can see some examples here of what you might ask to gain some insight into the student's mind. Some examples are what's an estimate of the solution? Why are you doing that? How are you going to work that out? What made you think of that? All of these are letting us see a little bit of what students are doing, getting them to explain to us so we know better what's going on in their mind. Okay, the next questions are the push the thinking questions. Now, these are the type of questions that really make the activity or the lesson go even further. This is where we really get the most out of whatever activity we have prepared. We are taking what students are doing, we are reacting to that and coming up with questions that will push them further. So these questions are not to inform us. These questions are really to benefit the student by pushing them, by challenging them. So you can see some examples here. They include things like, is that the only way to solve it? They also get them to maybe look at a partner's work and compare. If we have students working in groups, we can ask one student who maybe wasn't writing to try to explain why this other student did it this way. We can ask them to try to convince us, or how would you convince a classmate that didn't believe you? All of these type of questions push students a little further. They aren't just getting an answer, but now they're having to really think about that answer. Is that answer right? Are there other ways to approach this? Do I truly understand everything there is to understand about this concept? Let's look at that question on there that says, will this work for all blank? So you can fill in the blank with whatever topic that activity is about that you're working on. But this type of question is getting students to generalize. Generalizing is a very difficult but important concept in math. When we generalize, we go from looking at very specific examples to saying, will this work for the general case? So I've seen it work here. Maybe I've seen a formula that works in a couple examples. Maybe I've seen a relationship that I'm noticing, but is it going to always be true? That is so important in math. That's where we come up with math rules and formulas and theorems. And if we can get students to start thinking like that, we are creating mathematical thinkers, and that will be so beneficial to them as they move on in math. These are probably more difficult than a lot of students have had to do in many of their math classes. For many students, 
they aren't being challenged to push their thinking this deep. For many students, math has been about getting an answer, getting a procedure right. Thinking about it is a whole new world for many students. So these kind of questions are so good to ask our students. It's, it's gonna be a struggle for many of them, but if we can ask these type of questions in our lessons, we are getting them to think deeper, to problem solve. We are getting them to do that really difficult learning. So that brings us to the last category. And I wanted to mention that because this last category is kind of like the bonus. If we can get here, then we are really getting students to take full ownership of their learning. This last category, metacognitive questions. These are like the cherry on top. If we can get here, we are really helping students out. So this is all about thinking about your thinking. These type of questions are asking students to reflect, reflect on how they thought about the problem, how they solved it. It's getting them to think beyond it. What questions do they have now that they've seen this solution? Do they have more questions? We're sparking their curiosity. If we can get them to wonder what might happen next, we're getting them to go beyond the lesson we have prepared. We're sparking their interest in math. That is when students are taking true ownership of what they're learning in math. These metacognitive questions, if we can sprinkle them in here and there more and more as the year goes on, we will start forming these habits in students of thinking about their thinking, of reflecting, of thinking, what questions do I have now? What do I wonder now? Those are the type of habits we want to form in our students.